Hey there, Sit and Spin fans. Hi, and welcome to this week's show, the edition where we'll be talking about rock and music documentaries, which I ask you fine folks to submit some of your favorites, and I will be mentioning some of your names to so the ones that I, I agreed with you and I have that I can show you. Without any further ado, let's get right to it. We'll kick it right off with the documentary Sound City, the same documentary that kicked off this whole little show idea. Uh, basically, the story of Sound City Recording Studio features Dave Grohl and a lot of other fine musicians who've recorded there. This was a favorite of Travis Legassi's and Scott Oliver's as well. Definitely check it out if you haven't yet. Some other ones I've featured in clips on the site this week. Searching for Sugar Man. This movie was a favorite of uh, Nelson Dudley and Travis Legassi as well, as well as Fred Kennedy. All these guys really like the movie as well as myself. If you haven't seen this yet, this should be high on your list of rock music documentaries to check out. Story of Sesto Rodriguez, and I don't want to give away too much of the story because it's better if you just watch it and let it unfold the way it unfolds, but if you are not a fan of this guy's music after you've seen this, I, I don't know, something wrong with you. It's great stuff, and it makes you begs the question, how come this guy wasn't more famous? I don't know, but it's good stuff. Anyway, next one on our list, It Might Get Loud, a little documentary, uh, which is a confab of three generations of guitarists, Jimmy Page from the 60s, The Edge of U2 from the 70s and 80s, and Jack White from the 90s to now. They all get together to discuss why, how they fell in love with guitar, what's so great about it, and just basically riff on the guitar. Great stuff. Definitely watch the deleted scenes on this one as well. There's a lot of good stuff to see. This one was a favorite of Don Farnham's as well as Nelson Dudley and myself. Running Down a Dream, the Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers story. Uh, this was another one that Don, Don Farnham also picked as a favorite of his. If you're a fan of Pennies at all and you haven't seen this, do yourself a favor. You need to. It's super long. It's actually like four plus hours long, spread out over two discs. Uh, that's how long it is. Directed by Peter Dog Bogdanovich. Jeez, trying to spit that one out. Uh, great, great stuff. Definitely check it out if you're a Petty fan. Anvil, the story of Anvil. My good music friend and buddy, Melissa Martin. Uh, took me to see this movie at the Space Gallery. It's the story of Canadian underdogs, Anvil, and how uh, they basically got passed by when all the other similar metal bands they debuted would became went on, like people like Metallica, who borrowed from them and stuff, went on to become superstars, and they got left behind. It's funny, it's heartbreaking, it's touching, uh, it's just a great, great story. And uh, after seeing this, my wife actually bought me tickets to go see them for my birthday one year. It was a great show, too. I actually got to meet Lips and Rob of the band. Super cool guys. Never seen it. Check it out. And that one uh, was a favorite of uh, quite a few people. Uh, lost my list on that one, though. Next on our list, Pearl Jam 20, directed by Cameron Crowe. Uh, the story of Pearl Jam, great documentary. Again, like most of these are great documentaries, so I quit saying that right away. But uh, great, great film. Uh, also a favorite of Don Farnham's and Eric Blumenthal's. Check it out if you're a Pearl Jam fan. Uh, the Doors, When You're Strange. There's a lot of good Doors documentaries. This is probably the most recent one, but also a really, really good film if you're a Doors fan at all. Uh, narrated by uh, Johnny Depp. I actually found out what uh, Mr. Mojo Rising is an anagram for Jim Morrison. You're watching this little flick. Uh, this one was a uh, favorite of Fred Kennedy's as well. Uh, there are plenty of other great Doors documentaries out there, but the, that one's really good. Rush Beyond the Lighted Stage. This one's a favorite of uh, Sean Jeffries as well as Geno Ames and some other Rush fans. Uh, just if if you aren't a Rush fan, you'll be a Rush fan after watching this documentary. Really, really good documentary. I reach for some more. Uh, Foo Fighters, Back and Forth, a favorite of Mike Nason's and as well as myself. Really great documentary about the Foo Fighters. Very forthcoming, frank, and forthright. Uh, one of the most honest music documentaries I've seen. It's like amazing like how, how revealing they are. This, aside from the Eagles doc, this one's pretty much like that. And speaking of the Eagles doc, it's, it's upstairs. I don't want to bring it back down. But uh, that was a favorite of Pete Zabos and some other people. We already talked about it in another show, so we don't need to go there. Queen, Days of Our Lives, Missy Parker Crockett. If you haven't seen this yet, you should. Really, really good documentary covering the band. This one also takes part over um, two parts, the earlier career, the later career. But if you're a Queen fan at all, this is a doc for you to check out. Uh, another reason when I got, if you're a Beatles fan at all, or more specifically, George Harrison, Living in the Material World, uh, Martin Scorsese movie, really, really good documentary of this. I mean, I like George, but this really gave me a lot of respect for him further that I didn't have before after I saw it. Dig! This was a favorite of Travis, Leg Travis Legassi's. God, Travis, hard to spit that name out. Do I sound Canadian saying that? 
Uh, <laughs> anyway, this is Zell's uh, story of uh, the Brian Jones Style Massacre and the Dandy Warhols. Um, there was some controversy following the release of this movie about how accurately the bands and stuff were portrayed in it, but if you're a fan of either one of those bands, it's a great little flick to watch anyway. Definitely check that out. There's a bunch of good documentaries out from The Who. Of course, you could always watch the classic The Kids Are Alright, one of my favorite docs. Or if you want to see something that's a little bit more up to date, pick up uh, The Amazing Journey, The Story of The Who. I still actually haven't even finished getting all the way through this one myself. A favorite of Scott Oliver's as well as a few other folks. And if you're a Who fan, you need to check it out. And, jeez, I'm running out of stuff here. Um... Some of my faves that some people didn't list, uh, but before I get into those, there are some I have only on VHS. I couldn't find my VHSs to dig out for uh, reference, but a favorite of uh, Missy Parker Crockett, Eric Blumenthal's, Michelle Balzano, Sean Jeffrey, and a few other people, Decline of the Western Civilization, The Metal Years. If you're a metal fan, definitely a classic that you have to check out. And also, if you're a metal fan, uh, Metallica, some kind of wonderful, I've misplaced my DVD, you can't find that for a visual reference, but a fan, fans of this movie were uh, Don Farnham again, Jeannie Winslow, Scott Stanga, and Gino Ames, and a great, great flick on Metallica, and also really good behind the scenes of a band like kind of falling apart and uh, getting back together right before your eyes, good stuff. Uh, some of my other personal faves, if you're a Beach Boys fan, Endless Harmony, uh, story of the Beach Boys, really good stuff. They had another documentary out years and years before this called American American Dreams uh, with, or something like that. Really good documentary, but uh, Endless Harmony, the Beach Boys story, awesome doc. If you're a Beach Boys fan, check it out. Um, along the lines of pop and power pop, one of my personal favorite bands that kind of got the shaft, but I got the knack, getting the knack. This is kind of like a behind the music style documentary on the knack. Uh, it follows that kind of format and probably was filmed for it but never used. But great documentary about the knack. Paul Pop fans, definitely check that puppy out. Of course, one of my all time favorite recording artists, Alice Cooper. Uh, Prime Cuts. This is the deluxe edition version of the Alice Cooper story. Uh, and granted, this was filmed back in the early 90s. So there's a lot of stuff that's happened since then. It doesn't quite tell the complete story, but for the early years, it's a musty documentary all the way up through probably the, the mid to late 80s. Uh, never officially released, but there are like things that exist. Kiss Beyond the Makeup. Probably one of the best Kiss documentaries. This was originally aired on VH1. Um, but one of, probably one of the best KISS documentaries I've seen, and there's lots of great KISS documentaries. Uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Funky Monks, I know this is a favorite Mike Nason's as well. Great documentary about the making of the Blood Sugar Sex Magic album. Really, really cool. Uh, another one of my all-time favorite musicians, Thin Lizzy, The Rocker Portrait of Phil Linet. Um, I've seen a lot of different Thin Lizzy docs and uh, Phil Linet documentaries. Most of them aren't that great. This one, actually pretty good. I'm still waiting for a definitive Phil Line at Thin Lizzy documentary. As close as you can get to that, though, would be the VH1 Behind the Music docs, and there's a lot of great ones of those. A couple I still haven't even gotten around to watching myself, but mean to check out. Lemmy, the story of the classic boathead bassist. Awesome. You know, you know it's going to be good, but I had to pick it up because it's Lemmy. Still haven't watched it, but it's going to be awesome. Uh, and, uh, of course, the most recent documentary on Ozzy Osbourne, God Bless Ozzy Osbourne, directed by Ozzy's son, Jack. And one of these days, I'll actually get around to watching that. Of course, there's a ton of other great docs out there. Oh, here's another one that fell, and I didn't get to pick it up. Surprisingly, you would be surprised to learn that I this. But uh, the Bee Gees, this is where I came in. Really great documentary chronicling the whole history of the Bee Gees. There's been since been an updated version of this since the, one of the other Gibb brothers passed away, but I haven't got that version yet. Uh, man, I could go on and on and on with great rock docs. There's uh, plenty of that haven't even come out yet. One of the ones I'm looking forward to is actually the movie that this is what we're listening to right now is the soundtrack to. Uh, it's a uh, big star. Nothing can hurt me now. The story of Big Star. It's screening in theaters right now and very limited engagements put out by Magnolia Pictures. I'm very much looking forward to either screening coming around here or being able to purchase the DVD slash Blu-ray when that finally comes out. If you get a chance, and stuff that's not even available to watch, but you can see it on places like YouTube, there's a lot of great BBC documentaries. Uh, there's one called, uh, about sort of along the lines with the Eagle, one that's called uh, Hotel California um, 
from, I can't even remember that. It's Hotel California. It's basically the story of the L.A. sound from the early 60s all the way up into, like, it's Haiti in the early, like, Haiti in the 70s and up into the 80s where it kind of fell apart and got replaced. There's another one called When Albums Ruled the World. It's all about the story of vinyl, which is very cool. Uh, definitely lots of good stuff that you can check out for free right on YouTube, and you should do that if you don't have a chance, as well as checking out some of the other ones I pointed out. If you still have another one you think I missed, get back to me on it. Next week, I have a pretty cool show idea presented to me by one Josh Taylor, who challenged me. And he said, Joe, I want to know what three of your favorite albums are, but here's the catch. you got to name one from the 90s, one from 2000 to 2009, and one from 2010 to now. And I'm like, my only question was, only three? Because there's a gazillion. But that's the challenge part, is just nailing or narrowing it down to three. See if you can come up with the same thing and get back to me with what yours would be. And tune in next week to find out what my three picks are. And again, thanks to Josh Taylor for coming up with an excellent idea and challenge. This has been super long. Thanks for sticking around. And we will talk to you next time on Sit and Spin. Bye.